Good day. Welcome to Light and Bessie taking its glory to the ends of the world. Today's devotional is captioned This Life. This Life. And our team scripture is taken from Acts chapter 5, verse 20. I read from the KJV. The angel said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the ways of this life. Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the ways of this life. When Jesus said, when you read John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. When the master said this, he wasn't talking to corpses, but to living beings. Yet he said, I came so you may have life. The gospel of Jesus is about a life, a special type and kind of life. It is called the divine and supernatural life of God but is affectionately referred to as eternal life. Everything in Christianity hovers around this life. Christianity is not character training. There is character training in Christianity, but Christianity is not character training. Other religions do the same. They also engage in character training. Christianity is a life, one that you received in Christ. When the angel freed the apostles from the prison, after they have been imprisoned by the chief priests, and these Sadducean leaders, they were instructed to go preach the words of the life that we are talking about this morning, the divine life of God. So the angel instructed them, that's an instruction from God. It says, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the ways of this life, all the ways of this divine life of God. When we come preaching and teaching the gospel, it is a discussion about a type of life, the heavenly life. One that you receive whilst on earth and not in heaven. This is what is very important for Christians to understand and know that they receive this heavenly eternal life whilst on earth and not in heaven. Because many traditional churches, they have taught their members to believe that it's when Jesus returns from heaven that they are going to receive eternal life. So they see eternal life as something futuristic. No. Is not true. If you are a Christian, then presently you have eternal life. And eternal life is a life, it's a substance in you, a substance in you. It's not something, this is just uh, hypothetical, no. It's not a religious cliche. This is something very true. It's a spiritual substance, a spiritual matter. You have it in you and it's called eternal life. This life is immune to sin, sickness, poison, and all forms of ungodliness. It is the indefatigable and indomitable life of Almighty God. This life cannot be defeated. It's a transcendent life. It was because of this life that Paul didn't die from the venom of a viper on the island of Malta. Paul has traveled to the island of Malta, actually was heading towards Rome. And he has reached at that time Malta. But when he was bitten by this snake, Paul was not harmed. Actually, the Bible says that he shoved this snake into a fire. Why did Paul do that? Paul knew he had this life that we are talking about this morning. 
What energizes this life is the right knowledge and faith. This is what you need in this period of the pandemic. Now in this period of the pandemic, sometimes you, when you Christians don't want to take the best route. So the best route may be the difficult route, but that's also the foolproof and the most protective route. That is the divine route. So many times you may go for natural going for natural solutions like vaccines is not wrong. No, there are also some people who preach against that. That is not wrong. It's not wrong for people to take vaccines. Jesus says that nothing that gets into the body of a man defiles him. So it's not sin to take vaccines. Actually, vaccines, if they are good, good vaccines, is something good. But the thing you have to understand is that man. It's limited in knowledge and that is why you cannot trust man fully it's not that he's a bad person necessarily of course there can be some who can also use vaccines to do evil things that is there but even the good people who are producing vaccines for the good cause they have been vaccines throughout the years right your ch when you are children and baby receive vaccines right but those who even produce good vaccines they can produce that vaccines as good as in relation to how much knowledge they have of the situation, right? That's why nowadays you hear that there are people having complications with some of the vaccines, right? In Europe, Norway, Denmark, and other parts of the world, right? That's what you have to understand. So it's not about the vaccine. The vaccine is not says it is, right? But it's more about you knowing that that vaccine is safe. But why don't you go for the foolproof one, the divine vaccine? So that you already have it. That is what is important. That protects you without any cost or side effects. What energizes this life, like I said, is the right knowledge and faith. This is what you need in this period of the pandemic. It is because of this life that you have received that Jesus said, when you read Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, it says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. These are the very words of the Master himself, the very words of Jesus. Can you trust the words of Jesus? You can trust Jesus. If you can trust the words of the immunologist or the doctor who is injecting the vaccine to you, the nurse, then you can trust the words of Jesus. It's as simple as that. You can trust the very words of Jesus too. If you can trust the words of a man who is just telling you about the situation, who, who sometimes even get infected by that same disease and die, how much more the words of Jesus? So that's why sometimes Christians get themselves into problems. You see, why don't you go for the foolproof one, the solution which is foolproof, without any side effect? Why don't you go for that? But that is sure in Christ. It's sure in Christ. You can trust the words of Jesus and be at rest. You can, you can trust it. Yes, this life, this life that we are talking about, makes you immune to all deadly things to viruses, bacteria, to COVID, etc. This life energizes your B cells and T cells. All the T cells and T cells, B cells and T cells that you need. These vaccines to prime. Right? You need, you, you, it can be energized by the divine life that I'm talking about this morning. The divine life of God. And that life is in you as a Christian. When you have this life, there is nothing like immunosuppression. No, not when you have this life inside you. All Christians have this life, but they have to be taught and trained in it. The Bible helps us to understand that graciously you have all been deemed this life, but you have to be taught and trained in it. You are not protected just because you have this life. So this is why sometimes many Christians don't understand. 
and they ask certain questions out of ignorance say that if what you are saying is true then why is this happening to this christian that's why it's happening to this christian why this christian died from COVID? no 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 you have to understand you have to uh, understand the word of god the mind of god you, you study the word of god and you understand what god expects from every christian what god shows from his word is that you are not just protected just because you have this life but it's when you know you have an experiential knowledge that you have it you have you have a knowledge a consciousness of this life and you know what it means john the apostle knew that having an experiential knowledge of this life of the life that we are talking about is what will put it to work so he wrote to the church to say when you read first john chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13 and this is the record that god had given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that had the son had life and he that had not the son had no life these things i have written unto you that believe in the name of the son of god that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe in the name of the son of god john says you have to know that you presently have this life it is called eternal life John says that I've written to you. He tells them the purpose of writing. Please, as you can observe, John here is saying that he's giving them the reason. Imagine this man wrote all this epistle for one reason. He says, I wrote all this so that you may know that you have eternal life. Why did he want them to know? Now, these people that he was writing to already had this life. So why, why didn't John just sit down and say, that, oh, they have it so it will work for them? No. John knew the principles the heavenly principles and knew that even though they have eternal life if they are not taught to understand that they have it it will not benefit them it's the same with, for every christian so what did he say he said i have written unto you that believe in the name of the son of god that is i have written unto you this you christians that ye may know that ye have eternal life so john says my reason for writing to you is to help you know that you have that life that eternal life, that indefatigable life of God. So knowing is very important. John says, you have to know that you presently have this life. It is called eternal life. Why won't Christians be dying from COVID when they have been wrongly taught to believe that they will receive eternal life when Jesus returns? You see the difference? So some Christians have been taught to know, like John taught other Christians to know others don't know for others they think that they will receive it when jesus comes back and that is why they have the consequences that they have you see so when christians why would christians be dying from COVID when they have been wrongly taught to believe that they will receive eternal life when jesus returns such folks don't know that they have eternal life presently no beloved you already have eternal life it is this life that paul talked about when he said when we galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ lived in me and he says and the life which i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me galatians chapter 2 verse 20 paul says here that i now have this divine life in my flesh he says the life which i now i presently live in the flesh not in the spirit in the flesh right that's what paul said he never said he was going to have it in heaven paul never said he was going to have eternal life that divine life when jesus christ returned he says to the galatians sins the life which i now have in the flesh this is the same paul who said that if the spirit of him that raised up jesus christ dwells in you he that raised up jesus shall also vitalize energize your mortal body Preachers teach their opinions to the congregants and after call Christians dying from COVID as being God's will. For you, the Christian, it is a complete waste of time to cry and beg God to do something about the COVID. God has done all he needed to do. He did it in Jesus. 
So this crying that God should do something about the COVID, this crying is not going to work because you, when you cry for God to do something, God, you are telling God to do something again, to do what he has already done. So it's not about crying to God to do something about the COVID. It's about you being taught to know what God has done in Jesus. Did you see Paul crying to God to do something about the viper bite? He didn't say that. He didn't do anything like that. All that God needed to do was to give you that divine life. And he has done that. We have to know what we have. So to pray, talk, and act in consistency to the supernatural life in Christ. God bless you.